Okay, if I am be lucky enough to write this down, I will. But right now we are waiting for this thing to actually pull the keyboard. Oh, there you go. Well, this is going to be a video dedicated also to my disappearing sister. And her name is Abyserka Aussets. Oh, there you go. There's a new side right there. My blog, my testimony about MK Ultra. And uh, that's very nice. But today I'm going to be talking about to you. This is the one we're going to be. I'm going to give you a comment on this one here. So this is the news I have published. And in this news, I did discuss certain similarities used in MK Ultra between two people uh, close to me during MK Ultra that made themselves comfortable using against me, yes indeed against me, even uh, departure issues such as departure from this world if I would not embrace one or the other. I think that they did go a little bit too far. Uh, I don't know about the people who evaluated me, but I do recall clearly involved in MK Ultra, a psychiatrist from Ljubljana who became even my designated uh, by court. Um, or maybe, I don't know, by a psychiatry Ljubljana alone. So they work together with the court. They decide, they, um, they appoint their own uh, examiners that are certified to give their opinion. But her name is uh, Vida, something like this. She examined me and met my mommy, my daddy in real time. She was involved in MK Ultra all along. And this is an older lady who figured out their MK Ultra that I am displaying unusual amount of affection toward my mommy and my daddy. And half with the psychiatrists uh, orchestrated on many occasions. Uh, something of what they indicated is actually related to the mental illness simply because I didn't want anything bad to happen to my mommy and to my daddy during MK Ultra. All through this mommy and daddy did a lot of shitty stuff. Well, They wouldn't have done this kind of stuff if it wasn't for Slovenian state that demanded from them this type of uh, attitude, this type of mistreatment, this type, this exact type of uh, uh, criminal misconduct. Very, very heavy criminal misconduct. That's basically for one thing. The people that were involved in it, that could resolve, it was even their job, which will work required them, or the people who 
particularly acknowledge me due to even this affection for my parents, which would totally contradict it. Um, lies which psychiatrists demanded from my parents against me in 2013, my family, sister, uh, niece, or her, her daughter, uh, to push against me uh, domestic violence accusations and such. So these are, these are the things that are like totally like, well, yeah, in some Hollywood movie, uh, and, you know, if uh, Steven Spielberg wants to depict somebody, his mind is twisted, as crazy, because he was really, always, he was specialized into people with a closeted personalities. Uh, he knew how to uh, relate himself to the audience. Uh, I think even through the, like, timeshare type of psychiatry, psychology, you know, when you have, when you push down the truth, people idea about you must purchase a timeshare because it's so good and you know it's really not good you know that the maintenance fee you're going to be paying for some property which you're going to exchange every year for maybe even extra money uh, what they refer to as a down payment that you will pay uh, will by far, far exceed what otherwise would be a real cost for your vacation. And so what they do is they involve fake people in the process that would every here and there announce a fake sale uh, and, you know, you create like a hysterical environment uh, based on which other people that would load themselves at a buffet, where they prefer the buffet for the people, where the people eat. Uh, maybe with a lot of food they eat, maybe there is a crazy moment that happens and they actually realize that they really need something that eventually would cause them maybe even their marriage not only lost home or, you know, car or whatever, because when those payments kick in for something you don't need and exceeds your uh, potential, financial potential, uh, you know, kinds of stuff that happens, people even lose their families. And indifferent from that, uh, I think Spielberg also did with his cinema audience using, uh, at least when these films are launched first, to demonstrate its success. I think that's what they're using. I think that they use audience or kinds of stuff to create like hysterical environment based on which people just see themselves in something that has very little to nothing to do with reality with the real world and that's how twisted this world became so let me say to you something i like the way i uh, depicted this part here about um how i was as a child you know like dress myself as a 50% as an as a Indian and 50% as a cowboy and stuff like this when I was a child, yeah? But it's a little bit more that I have to say to this, which I'm sure is going to be quite interesting also for the British Royals. These are all the issues that they're going to have to cope with. In uh, court procedures, What I want to say to you is that uh, I want to remind you when it comes to this cowboy stuff and I did indicate it in the video how the British started to portray me as a traitor uh, 
to the children, to the, to the Soviet community, to the Soviets, how they used facial features to detect uh, as per which facial features do you adhere to uh, and have demanded from the Soviets based on uh, different facial features, okay? some of which uh, they determined uh, the most Soviet faces uh, compared to the faces that are not so prevalent in what used to be a Soviet Union, you know, like let's say children from Slovenia or Polish children also in some cases, Czech children let's say, yeah, and as soon as they would get a sign that I was more, that I had a bigger affection for maybe even blonde, they had Soviets label me like on a car assembly line as a traitor. Yeah, even though I was from Slovenia, which is next to the Italy, Austria, Hungary, north of Croatia, delivered to the Moscow, which at the time, of course, was the Soviet Union. We are talking about 1976. Uh, and those faces, all through not familiar to me, I did go for the Russian girls that I liked it. Uh, but they made really quick selection, uh, kind of a pushing me into the world with uh, these blonde girls during MK Ultra, and then just affiliate me with them, making those beautiful brunettes, dark-haired girls disappear the picture. Um, well, you know, the thing about it is that this British. Uh, jokery which was used to further uh, incite to me in my face that I am a traitor, a treasoner. I have stated they have used uh, children from uh, upper grades that were already fluent in, in the English language as a translators. In some cases they were really good and, of course, professional translators, students at times that would go and study languages, Slovenian talking about. And so you would be right next to a royal and you would have a person that would be talking to you simultaneously translating whatever the other person is saying in your language. Um, and somebody would be translating back and so on and so forth. You know, uh, that's how MK Ultra is so beautiful because it gives you such a potential uh, for you to connect person, I should say freeze, unfreeze person, do it person, whatever the fuck you feel like. It's like a perfect, perfect interrogation instrument. Yeah, and they were doing this together with Americans, British, playing with the children in Moscow. And, you know, the world I encountered once labeled as a traitor was the world of unprecedented violence. Um, I was not the only one. There was other children, they labeled as a traitors, whatever, uh, delivered back to Slovenia, to the kindergarten, it started with the kindergarten, uh, and yes, it started with the kindergarten, the Moscow started with the kindergarten, and would have them, um, like, participate in some kind of gladiator, uh, game. These children became vicious, uh, defend them themselves basically for bare life from unprecedented degree of violence which are the co-evils 
lot of children same age or maybe even older uh, inflicted on them in groups and quickly some were destroyed um, or maybe they just made me feel like impressed with myself um, who knows really what went on So that this uh, game of, uh, as Americans refer to this, you know, Americans have this tradition, if you go to the Facebook, you go to the social media, they have this traditional, um, they refer to that stuff as uh, rebel, you know, like rebel, 100% rebel, rebellion, rebel, you know. I am a rebel, I am a southerner, I am 100% rebel, like this or that. Well, you know, lucky for me, folks, uh, I never felt like being a rebel. You know, I probably did disappoint at some of you, but you're going to be on a safer side if you see yourself legit, compliant with the law, uh, and if necessary, enforcing the law for the cost of leaving in the dust behind even those that are paid to and are not enforcing the law. In worst case scenario, people who would even enforce crime. Rather than pay their dues to society, uh, due to job assignments that are entrusted to them. This is how we talk when it comes to law enforcement. Law enforcement is a privilege. Not everybody can serve in a law enforcement. To serve as a law enforcement officer, uh, you, should, you should feel as, uh, well, somewhat really special. You should feel as um, as somebody who, is, who was awarded by the society with the highest degree of trust. That's, what, that's how it goes. So, hopefully that you wouldn't find yourself in a situation like I did. Uh, in life, however, nothing is given. You never know how life can twist, turns. Uh, it just might happen to you, just like it happened to me, that it will I require to know more. Absolutely. And under no circumstances, if it comes to worst of worst, never ever see yourself like a rebel. Never saw myself as a rebel. Uh, and this is definitely the first reason, the biggest reason why I am still alive. If I will see myself as a rebel, um, you, you don't actually stand chance of any kind. And under NKL, they always present you as a rebel. They will always try to instill in your head, like, you are a rebel. Like you're, you're a rebel. Like, you know? Exemplify you. Uh, police uh, through different uh, uh, methodical approaches for which I advise you if you find yourself uh, in a situation in which police is implicated uh, to always uh, protect yourself diplomatically by uh, going extra mile, uh, assisting those, uh, maybe even moving yourself out of their way, uh, basically whatever it takes uh, for not, uh, you know, incident to basically seal you you know, save your life, destroy you, basically. Uh, I, I don't 
remember in the US I had these police officers that uh, British Canadians also royals from Canadian at uh, you know Princess Anne was you know so proud about Prince Edward uh, Prince Charles Andrew uh, we send a group of police but he doesn't want you know he doesn't want he, he even moves out of the way on the sidewalk and so on you know and they would have this police officer that would basically occupy the whole fucking sidewalk he, they had them involved in NK Ultra <laughs> and we're gonna do this to you tomorrow and we're gonna do this to you deliberately and so on and so forth you know, say so just move out of the way and just go your way don't get into absolutely anything do your stuff best to your abilities uh, but if you are in a position which gives you the right to act that means when i say gives you the right to act that means that you have a capacity with 100 percent certainty to seal the deal that means that they will be found guilty no matter what and if it's worthy taking chance then i say do it but otherwise no um, always try to avoid conflict of any kind with the law enforcement. Um, this isn't because you would get in somebody's ass. Uh, this is because um, just like police officers that place themselves gloves on their hands when they investigate crime, you want to make sure that you prevent the possibility of any kind, uh, you know, of having circumstances that are being used against you, really turn against you, and and and, and you know, it, it's 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 damn bad. It's, it's really really bad stuff. It, it can turn ugly. Uh, so fast like you wouldn't even believe and then it's all over for you and that's when they win yeah so um, what I want to say to you in this video when I was a kid yes I dressed in a costume one time uh, it came from a Canada. It was a Princess Anne that got me uh, with Andrew. Uh, British Royals got me uh, from like a hat, like a beaver stuff, some shit like this, uh, with a, t a tail in the back. It came in the right moment. Yeah, I was about maybe like, I don't know, eight or nine years old, and it was so much violence that it was incredible in the school, in this grammar school. And I didn't know anymore how this all is, where in which, how this is all gonna turn. And to make me happy for that. Uh, well, what's that day when you have this once per year you have this Don Mashkur I don't know how you say that in English language Mashkur that means mask day of the masks in Slovenia whatever um, they got me this um, they wanted to make me feel special just so I wouldn't quit from everything and it was this gift really the British Royals got me and uh, I felt like really, really special with that, and I got next to that uh, like Davy Crockett really um, hat, this like really beaver stuff. It was so exclusive, man. Uh, I got like a little gun with a belt and um, nicely dressed in the jeans and stuff like this, and. It came in the right moment. <laughs> it was so special to me that it was actually the third grade, I tell you. I was exactly nine years old. <laughs> that I immediately 
um, climbed out of that. I was in, in depressed and stuff. And I got that stuff. It was like, you know, right like up to the last second, man, came that gift. Oh, boy. Um, I can't tell even today how much I appreciate that gift. Um, I really don't know what to do with myself anymore, but it felt so good that I didn't only climb back to my feet, but I started to pound other children if they want a piece of me without any mercy. All of a sudden, I was like 10 kids together again. What ra alarmed Russians in Moscow, it was like, what the fuck is going on? What the fuck you did? What the fuck you did? We already got him. We had him. We hold at him like this already. He was ours. We controlled him. We got him. He was our property. That's it. And what the fuck you did? Who did this? The British did. They did. They got him this. They, they got him this cowboy stuff. What kind of fucking cowboy stuff? It was this. This is the way it was. This is the way they talked. Uh, it was like anger, madness. Is what British. Always what good at the show people is British depicted love of Russians going all crazy mad about it. And you know, I told them, fuck you, I don't care. I got my gun and I got my uh, stuff. So I don't give a shit about this stuff, anyways. But thanks, anyways. Um, and it was, uh, oh yeah, I mean, it's just gonna be just like this, it's gonna be, yeah, just like that, yeah. So what do you want from me? Uh, and, well, my Davy Crockett uh, hat was taken away from me. Uh, they destroyed me the guns, the belts, they ripped me everything apart, and again, I was without anything. Same like other kids. Uh, all the magic stuff disappeared <laughs> just on time and I don't know what it was and maybe maybe it was so cute to these people to do stuff like this with me I don't know but um, I learned how quickly uh, it all turned around and then even worse happened um, another uh, day came for this uh, day of the masks yeah uh, and it was again you know we had these children uh, dressing themselves up and collecting the candies and shit and you know you give them donuts and stuff and that kind of stuff and uh, yeah I was sure boy you know we're gonna get something again and it was not it was uh, at my disappointment, it was my sister and my mom that had like a clown, you know, like a like fucking clown, I mean, dress. It was a fucking jumpsuit. I was like, that was probably in the second grade. I was like, like nine years old when they started to push down my throat to dress myself into yeah, into a fucking clown and that clown was green color with the pants like this wide on the bottom and you have never seen anything like this insane because uh, this costume too was a special gift from the Princess Anne and Princess Anne was the one that uh, considered this like an extremely, extremely bad idea <laughs> this uh, cowboy stuff, this pocket stuff uh, and uh, at home uh, my mom and my sister started to dress me into the so it's gonna be next day you're gonna go to the school with that shit uh, into this costume uh, the teachers were already all fucking uh, 
fired up, man. They were all waiting. You know, you know the teacher would say, yeah, and now, children, go and show us your costumes and shit. And the children would go and dress themselves in a fucking costume. And, uh, boy, I was horrified with that costume. I didn't like that costume. That costume was terrible. I felt like they would dress me into a lunatic, which my mom and my sister later on even admit indirectly I heard them saying how horrific it was this costume, how terrible this costume was. It really looked like a completely insane. So there was just a trauma. No, I refused to wear that fucking costume. With the violence, they somehow uh, managed me uh, to stand still and get that fucking costume on me. And, uh, it's probably, he looked like, uh, I don't know, you would, you would take maybe something like a bucket of water and pure on your dog or something like that. And it would probably look really sad in front of you or something like that. It was probably a really, really sad moment, pathetic, but very, very meaningful for the British. So this just goes to tell uh, how far these people are fucking around with a human dignity, uh, really from some other part of the world, uh, doing a stuff like this. Now, I ended up with uh, yeah. I found some uh, from the Indians, I don't know, from the Indian natives, from American natives, I found some, since Slovenian language, Perianitsa. Uh, the children plays that stuff. On, you know. Like natives had, like, you know, and then I look like an Apache with some jeans on and guns behind my belt and maybe even some crossbow actually bow and arrows what i'm trying to say is it looks cute over there when i mentioned about this squaw it, it looks fine maybe it even looks uh, funny interesting trust me uh, this whole thing was a product of something else i realized this whole thing is a product of something else and these people who did this shit took absolutely no responsibility for any of it it always broke down to uh, more and more and more and more abuse basically in every aspect of life that's all i wanted to say with respect to this um, what i labeled uh, i dress myself as uh this this year vina too and yeah. And also I get David Crockett and stuff like that. So uh, even this shit was imported to Slovenia. The cooperation between the Soviets and between the Britons, between the Russians, uh, you would be surprised on a level how high this cooperation was with one another this this shit is actually rather scary because when i consider this stuff the way it's interpreted on the tv it's like soviet union this and that soviet union yeah and united states of america and this and that and uh they they demonstrate this uh countries like a vietnam and let's say like korea and stuff uh, lately, it just happened to the Syria, they managed to split. 
when I when I consider all that stuff, I don't know what to say, man. I'll, I'll just say, um, pay attention to this witnessing because behind the curtain. And it's what I really do not understand. I really don't understand when it comes to uh, different political fractions in different parts of the world that are so keen uh, taking the side, either uh, American side or, uh, you know, or you can take a, a Russian side and so on. Um, maybe it's more time to uh, consider it. Uh, real intentions behind uh, certain issues that uh, some party wants you to see as a cooperation with another party, like it's pushing you down the throat certain issues that you feel would be better off with another party. Uh, Relations between the Soviet Union and between the British, I, w I couldn't describe them more pristine uh, than what I did. It was like the same government with two different options, uh, which also each had another two different options to offer. And it will be rocketeering through the foreign governments uh, portraying themselves in, in, in good and bad, for which one always would be liable, guilty for. Everything that will be happening would be always happening because of you, 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 and nobody else than you. Thanks for watching this video. Till next time. Nah, this stuff here, I consider this stuff, this cute stuff about the collection of all this, all these things that, that went on. It was deadly. It would be better growing up in some normal environment and have something out of my life. <laughs>